Hello and welcome to the Fitness Without Filter podcast. Today I'm going to be speaking to James Cox, who's a personal trainer and business owner in the UK, about strength training, its benefits, and why you should include it in your fitness program, how to make it relevant to you, and all the things you should be watching out for as you go about developing your own personal fitness. If you'd like to find out more about me and what I'm doing at the moment, you can find me on Instagram at rpthebodyengineer and my website www.thebodyengineer.training. On with the show. Check this out. Where and what is your sweat equity? What measures are you prepared to invest in yourself? Because that's what it is, folks. A higher quality of life and improvements in your quality of life and your health are an investment. Newsflash, everybody, you're always on the diet. I want you to view this as mental fit. As we all know, aesthetics are not health. If we're absolutely honest, anyone that embarks on a diet is looking to reduce their body fat, not their weight. Weight is just mass. I can take five kilos off you with a chainsaw. You won't be any healthier, but you'll have reached your goal. I first met James in 2008. I moved out to Dubai. He is a personal trainer and business owner with his wife in the UK. They own Real Fitness PT in Warwickshire. Um, James, I'll let you introduce yourself, buddy, and tell us a bit about yourself. Um, Hi, Rich. How are you doing, mate? Good. Thank you, buddy. Um, so yeah, so uh, my name is James Cox. I have been um, I've been in the fitness industry for I want to say it's in fact it's probably about now I say about I think it's my nineteenth anniversary right okay. um, in the fitness industry. So so I've been doing it a little while now mm-hmm. um, uh, as a as a personal trainer primarily. Um, so I have a background in obviously one to one to one uh, sorry excuse me one to one training. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm qualified as a uh, weightlifting coach, a uh, performance enhancement specialist or strength and conditioning coach, mm-hmm. uh, corrective exercise coach, uh, hold a number of um, internationally recognized PT qualifications, uh, massage therapist. Um, so yeah, a lot, <laughs> a, a fair amount of stuff, mate, when it comes to, yeah. comes to quality. Absolutely. Um, now, so you've been back in the UK a while because the last I knew of you when we were both working over here, you didn't yet have your little one because you've got a son now. You didn't own your own business in the UK. So you've had a whole right. a whole history of development in your career since you and I last worked in the same theatre. But I know you tend to really, really value strength training as a valuable part of physicality and working with your clients. Um, and today I want to focus a little bit on that as a concept and a, and a whole part of people's working out and exercise. Why, yeah. in your own words, why would you say that strength training is so important as part of the physicality and part of everyone's everyone's fitness program? Why should it be an absolute must? Do you, do you know what, buddy? Like, I'd like to give you some kind of like massively technical answer, um, <laughs> but 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 honestly, in, in look, and this is purely in my experience, right? I think I think people enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah, and what 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 we're about is we're trying to find a sort of consistent modality that that you can measure to get people a- active and exercising regularly and consistently and enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and in my experience, I've found strength training to 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 be that thing. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, there's all the there's all the physiological stuff, you know, from from energy expenditure to you know increased metabolic rate and you know bone density and like changing hormone profiles and um you know dopamine all that sort of all that good stuff but but really that that only comes when you get people kind of like engaged in a, in a consistent exercise program mm-hmm. um and and i think what what's so amazing about strength training is this ability to so for instance if someone's training for body composition right yeah if someone's training for body composition like you're not gonna see changes day to day right it, it, happen, it happens on a longer time frame, right? So if 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 we have people coming through our door here, and we're we're, we're our strength strength and improvement in strength is it's quite easy to quantify, right? So you can show somebody an improvement pretty much every time, and and you'll find some sort of metric that's that's changed every time they come in. So what that that what that does is that fulfills that need to. To show to show progress, right? Because mm-hmm. we're really working at that longer term goal, which is improving your body competition, right? But we're we're just chipping away at these strength goals, and it, it fulfills that kind of um, that virtuous cycle, right? If you come to the gym, like you see an improvement, so it it then becomes a right. I'm going to go to the gym and see another improvement, and mm-hmm. eventually, on a longer timeline, you reach that body composition goal without without really 
focus on it. That makes sense. Yeah, you, you, you just fo- you just focus on on your sort of performance outcomes. Sure, you're not having that uh, potentially negative emotional um, like fixation and loop based on scales and measurements. Exactly, exactly. That's that's really well put. So that's that's exactly what it is. It's shifting that focus away from where you're improving rather than torturing yourself or beating yourself up with a, with a metric that as we both know is mm-hmm. not a, is not a good way of charting progress it's non-linear right yeah i mean and and as i know from your social media of your business and everything else regardless of age and ability every single client every single person you work with does benefit from strength training strength development yeah 100 percent. so so we so i think our oldest clients here here is 84 right and 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 and, and that that's the thing isn't it i think is that so when people say strength training i, I did a blog post a little little while ago and it was kind of introduced as that people in in some people's mind they they think strength and conditioning they'll think olympic weightlifting mm-hmm. or they might think some huge eastern european guy turning purple you know, under a huge back squat Right, or it might be somebody stepping on stage, kind of like you know, painted orange. Right, yeah, yeah. It, it, that that's strength training in some people's mind. But actually, um, we've got a guy here who's eighty four, mm-hmm. and uh, his, his name is his name's Michael. So when he first came to us, like he he, he like his his uh, his uh, daughter had to bring him in on sticks and all that type of stuff. So his strength training was getting up and down out of a chair. Mm-hmm. Right, so that's that's still a squat, right? But it's it's that end of that continuum, yeah. right? And we were able to address that, and his quality of life improved drastically because he's able to get back out of the house again, and he's got his confidence back. And as soon as he gets out of the house, then you start to get all this kind of mental stimulation from that, and it just reverses that that you know that that potential decline that that, that he may have had. Um, whereas on the other say other side of the uh, sorry the other end of the the, the um, the continuum there we've got a guy who um he's currently uh what is he i think he's yeah he's the number one in the in the gb boxing team at the moment right okay. so he, he would have gone to the olympics um had it have been um i think they reduced the squad sizes um, right okay but he's just he's just he's just recently fought in the boxing world championships and finished in the top eight okay um so he's only only one fight away from medal so like we also squat him yeah right? but it's it's a very very different different outcome and and you've got everything between that right mm-hmm. yeah no absolutely like i say it's the idea that you can always improve strength in somebody regardless of their their personal circumstances like you say you've got special populations through to high level athlete they both need to do the same biomechanical development it just has to be tailored to suit their own personal circumstances it, it, it's exactly that so through the through the, through, sorry, through the um, assessment process it's just about finding out where that person is on that continuum mm-hmm. and just applying the relevant the relevant stimulus right yeah absolutely so with that you i mean you and i both agree that there's so much importance and value that should be put into strength development far more than most other aspects of training so why do you think that there is still some degree of reluctance i mean you sort of hinted on it a second ago when it comes to the, this idea of what you and i know works and what a lot of people know works just start picking up heavy shit you know, why do you think there are some people that still shy away from that and opt for like the easier stuff and the lighter, lighter tasks? I think, yeah. So I think, I, th- I think there's this, there's still this perception that it's not, it's not for me, right? Um, meaning that it's, it, it, you know, I think you, you, you always see the extremes, right? When, mm-hmm. when I think when you see, when you see strength, like yeah. in the. In, in popular culture, it'll be things like world strongest man or bodybuilding contest, or, and it, it, it's the it's the extremes that we see. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas um, I think um, so, if you take take world strongest man as the, as, as the example, right? You've got some of the, some of the, the the lifts that you'll see see there are actually the type of things that people would really need to do. Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of non uh, like non gym strength in there right so, yeah um, if you lift if you lifted a barbell for example i can teach somebody to lift a barbell off the floor right because it's a barbell it's meant to be lifted yes yeah, and yeah. It, it's it's straight and it's the right dimensions for your hands and it's got grip and you can use chalk and it's perfectly balanced right um whereas if you if you take strong men where you know with an atlas stone or an, an objects that don't comply right? yeah these are the, these are the type i mean how many times have you had a client say oh yeah i, I, I have a twinge in my back 
doing the bins or in the garden or carrying whatever right that this this it can be scaled i think is 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 what i'm saying is that we'll see this kind of like um extreme case which i think people are i can't do that Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like well again it's just about making it relevant to to you and to to where you're at i think i think there's some i think there's reluctance with 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 injury mm-hmm. i think there's reluctance with we still have to battle this am i going to get too big and bulky yes yeah. um and and like as we both know you know i've been uh, i've been in the fitness room for 20 years not once i've ever had, had somebody say to me james you know what? i need to stop lifting i'm too big yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right um i think uh, i'll be completely honest with you i think the uh the the pd the thing um distorts um distorts things you know Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Um, no i very much agree with that i mean and and that's that's a bigger problem than ever right now because there's so many people that would take and do anything to have the social media physique rather than build the physique yeah you know when you've got youtube channels of 19 year olds from gymshark going i look like this a two percent body fat and like unless you've been doing fucking olympic level gymnastics since the age of five there's no way you look like that naturally and uh, and for, uh, for me, I, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I think my my issue is, and I, and, I, and I've and I've dealt with this where I've had people that have, have worked with the trainers, and it's like they've not been honest about it. Mm. Which is that that's 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 where that. So you like do you do you, man? I have absolutely no problem with that at all. I have friends that have that, that have done that kind of stuff. I have no no issue with it at all. When, when I think when I think it's a bit disingenuous is when you start to talk about clients about weighing chicken and broccoli and brown rice yes yeah, yeah right and 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 you're and you're passing that on to them knowing knowing that you that it, the you know it's not what what you're doing is 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 something that they're not going to do sure and yeah. you're 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 presenting a a lifestyle and a, and a way of doing things which you you know isn't going to serve them as well because they're not prepared or they don't know mm-hmm. the things that you're doing like either either side of that. So I think I think I think that I think that's an issue. I do think that's an issue. Um, as I said, you do you, but I think if you're doing that stuff, I think you should, be, in my opinion, be honest with the people that you're working with because I think that moves the goalpost drastically. Yeah. Yes. No. I would absolutely agree with that. And and like you said, I've never found anybody who doesn't do more than a basic intro to strength training who doesn't ultimately be, uh, enjoy it because as long as they learn correct technique and movement for, for them within their range there's there's that ultimate reward of like you said just grit your teeth and dig in you know you can deadlift this great i couldn't do that two weeks ago you know i, I can do um, this and i couldn't do that before you know and it, it it is that ultimate reward system and if you find you can't do something one week yeah well guess what in a few weeks you probably can and, and, and that's and that's a big, a big a big piece of the puzzle, mate. Is 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 convincing people that they can do things that they don't think they can do. Mm-hmm. So so just so just this week, two days ago, I had a fifty eight year old fifty eight year old grandmother like do her first pull up. Right. Like that's that's awesome. Yeah, that's very impressive. Right. That's that that's like you know that's 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 awesome. You know, and I think probably that's what we should be seeing. Mm-hmm. That's that. That's as, that's aspirational and that's inspirational. Sure. And you know, she 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 hasn't she's done that through just going through a process. Mm-hmm. There was there's nothing there's nothing magical about that. It was just setting setting that as a as an objective and kind of planning out how we're going to go there and just doing it consistently. Yeah. Like it, it 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 can it can be done. You know, it it, it can be done. Yeah, and I so I and I very much agree with your point that people tend to think of they only ever see what's made it around in terms of strength. They, they think, think of the freakish image or the whatever, and the housewife doesn't want to look like Arnie and everything else. And I've pointed out to, right. to women in the past going, right, you know when men go to the gym and they work their ass off at their arms to get a little bit more curved to their biceps, how is it right. that that happens but you think picking up 15 kilos is going to give you legs like a 19-stone <laughs> rugby player? Right, and, and and to go back to my point there about that, you, what you see in the popular is the extremes. Is if you if you if you spend any time, let's say you you always see the big lifts. Mm-hmm. Right? It's always the world record squats. So you see the heavy, you'll see the heavyweights. Yeah, 
Um, same, same like using strong man's example, using Olympic weightlifting, using power for an example. But if you if you look at the weight classes, if you look at the female fifty kilos, mm-hmm. right? They, like the like the people like particularly in Olympic weight weightlifting, moving a lot more than I am, right? At half my body weight, and they don't look too big and bulky. They look incredibly athletic. Yes, yeah because they built up that overall performance around strength training so that, you, that your body doesn't need to become massive, especially when you look at certain mm-hmm. physiologies, the older population or the female population, you don't have the physical capacity to develop that much. Right. Like you said, right. your, your 58 year old lady who's doing a pull up, she doesn't look like a 25 year old Marine, no. but she's got that degree of, of strength to weight capacity to now go and do a pull up at her, at her age as a grandmother, which is, it is a genuinely impressive feat. You know, I, I'm going right. to take that away and mentally log that because that's a hell of a point to put you out somewhere in the future. <laughs> right. the, the, the video will be coming up on my social. Good, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that. It, it's, a, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a proper pull-up as well. Cool. It's proper oh. dead, dead hang, chin over the top. There was probably three there, to be honest. Right. <laughs> oh, good. I'm definitely keeping an eye on that then. Right, okay. So we're talking about the, the benefits and the need for strength training. If we were going to talk to some absolute fitness newbies then or – people who had been sort of exercising for a while, but doing the same old routine, you know, and not really progressing anywhere. How would you think, how would you recommend they approach some entry level strength work? They start approaching proper work as we would call it in terms of strength development, rather than just leg extension, leg flexion, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's a good question. I I mean, obviously I'm going to say this. I think the first thing that I would do is I would try and find somebody who knows how to teach how to do it. Um, Right. Because I think, like, so, so with that, so with our program here, like, we we use what we call like compound lifts, right? Mm-hmm. But once once you get the foundation, so so for example, um, we might teach somebody to touch their toes first as a as a as a prerequisite to a kettlebell deadlift, right? Which then might become a trap bar deadlift, which then might become a barbell deadlift, which might become a power plane, for example. Along that continuum, right? But but actually, once you can once you can um, once you can go through that kind of like hip hip hinge, it, it doesn't really matter what the tool is. Yes, yeah. if, if if that makes sense, it's just having that sound foundational movement. Mm-hmm. Right, um, and the the, the the same the same with the with the with the squat to an extent. Like we we might it might be a bit nuanced depending on what what the goal is, but if you can if you can just develop that foundational patterning which is why i think like pts who know who know how to teach movement and know what a good quality movement is mm-hmm. is, is that 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 would be my 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 first my first point of call because again like so when i first started in the industry i was uh, the, the fixed path machines were still very much Kind of the, the dominant thing, and when I so I started as a fitness instructor, yeah, that was kind of you, the intro, right? Is you taught pe- people the six machines in a circle: leg extension, uh, leg curl, like seated chest press, seated row, pull down, all that type of stuff. But I was trying to teach people to, you know, let's let's get some free weights. Let's let's let, let's teach how to do a, a, a dumbbell bench or a, a work towards pull up or or a body weight squat, all this type of stuff. But what I think now, right, is that all the Compound lifting stuff is popularized. Yes, but it's done poorly. I very much it's agree. Gen, 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 generally speaking, so there'll be some ego involved where people are trying to lift stuff that's too heavy. Um, and the, the other big piece of the picture, mate, for me with strength training is that look, let's be honest, like we live in a really sedentary society, mm-hmm. right? So people, people, people have these performance metrics in the gym. Right, and and these are kind of like inspired by social media, and but but people that are almost kind of full time athletes, right? Yes, if you sit yeah. on your ass, if you sit on your ass for ten days, uh, sorry, for, sorry for ten hours a day, mm-hmm. right? And and your your strength training metric is a heavy deadlift. Sure, like you're probably going to need to do something to fill that gap between sitting on your ass and a heavy deadlift. Yes, yeah. Does, does that make sense? So, so, so at the front end of our process, we we will try we will work on movement competency mm-hmm. and getting people out of these sort of overly flexed positions and teach them teach them the opposite of that. Mm-hmm. All right, so so we can strength train effectively and safely. Yeah. No, I, and, I, and, that, and, and and I think I think I think that's that's 
it's a thing. So I, I can't remember this quote, this quote from, but it's like you wouldn't learn to drive in a Formula One car. Yeah. Right. You, you wouldn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so when it comes to strength training, you, people don't don't spend enough time like learning the basics. They walk into the gym the first time and throw six kilos on their back and wonder why they they had their back squatting. Yes. Yeah. And and, and 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 the other thing to say, mate, I think there's an overemphasis in this industry on on muscle soreness and DOMS. Mm-hmm. And, and this needs to be broken all the time. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. Do, do you know what the people I work with that want to train twice a week and fitness isn't their passion? It's something that they do to, to be healthy. Mm. They don't want to be sore for three days. Yeah. They don't want to be screwed for the, uh, the, the, the 40 hours um, after training. Right. And I think, and I think this, this, you know, the, you've all heard it, the no pain, no gain. I think yeah, it's misconstrued. Yeah. All that bullshit. It's misconstrued. And like the fitness industry will say it. And then the lay person will come in and thrash themselves. And wonder why they can't go to the gym that week, and people can become very disconcerted yeah. by the fact that they're perpetually sore mm-hmm. because they can't get that volume of training in because the first workouts making them too sore, yeah. and then they they never get past that. Like particularly in January, you see that all the time where people have a week there and they can't go back to the gym next week because they've busted themselves. Yes, yeah. No, you're absolutely so, right. So, so, so an, an, another thing that we do. So, if I, if, if I, if we make somebody sore in the first phase of training, I'm almost kind of like, do you know what? I don't. We don't want to do that, right? Mm-hmm. We want to. We want to give them the absolute minimal effective dose so they can start to learn the pattern in well, and we can start to challenge it a little bit, but not to the point where they can't come in and train with it to be two days later. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I. So. so no, go on. I suppose the, 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 the take home really is just like get somebody to teach you the basics. Mm-hmm. Just get somebody to teach you the basics, man. And, yeah. and it doesn't, and I think again, with the whole kind of like um, the social media thing, is like people are searching for are searching for the magic exercise or this crazy variation. And the truth is the, body's, the body has a finite number of movements it can do. And if you just focus on your, your big your big patterns and, and learn to do them well, and yeah, there'll be some nuances and some variations between what tool you use and you know what's the surface you're on and what stance you're in, but but essentially the basics are the basics, and it, it's that that's what it is. It's just get those things down, and and then um, it's that it's that idea of kind of um, you know trying to you know people are thinking out of the box all the time. I'm just like yeah, but you need to you need to know what's in the box before you can think outside the box. Just Smash your basics, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I very much agree with you. But there, there is this probably more so now than ever. There's this collision going on between we now live in probably one of the worst times because there's so much expectation for immediate satisfaction and immediate fulfillment. Yet when you come to something where that is not physically feasible, like with physical change and development, people aren't prepared to invest the time and the effort and the mental space to do it. So they'll try and jump in, in massive leaps ahead, which doesn't work. And like you say, when it comes to feeling sore and everything else, and it's like, oh, well, I want to do all this, but, but you physically can't. You don't have the competency and everything else. I've got a, a lady working with me now who's recently moved out here. She's in her later 50s. She's a busy lady. She's had um, kids in her early life, everything else. And she's got more than a couple of health problems. So her training has to be managed. And before she moved out here, she had a very, very specialist trainer back in the UK in London. Now, she's come to work with me, and last week was her first time training in four months. So we went through the assessment kind of stuff like you would do with your clients. And I said, right, okay, today we're doing all this kind of stuff. Tomorrow, or not tomorrow, the next session we're going to do this, and then we'll move on properly from next week. And she got to the second session. She goes, I don't really feel like we did much. I didn't feel very sore. I said, I I can do more. I said, yeah, but you've had months and months away from regular physical exercise and you told me of your own volition. You've been sat on your ass the entire time and we went through Christmas. So I know you haven't been eating well. I said, my primary focus for two sessions with you because of your health issues, you've got to keep your heart rate below a certain thing because of your own personal circumstances is to get you doing some things so you remember patterns, you move in a certain way, but also so that you can still move for two days afterwards. I said, don't come in and go, I used to deadlift this back in the UK. I said, yeah, but you haven't done that for a period of time. If I put that on the, the hex bar now and you manage it, you won't walk tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, we finished that second session and she called me up the next day. She goes, I can barely straighten my legs and everything hurts. And all we did was <laughs> what you set me. I said, yeah, exactly, because I knew what the outcome would be. And you, she was doing body weight squats to box height, not even full range and glute rid- bridges off the floor, that kind of stuff. And she was still screwed. So if I hadn't have been listening to her at her competency, regardless of what she told me, 
she'd have been laid in bed for two days, like calling her son, going, "Can you bring me something to eat, please? I can't get up." Right, and and I think and I think what we need to do is we need to move people away from the idea that that's what it needs to be. Mm, the extremes, like is 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 the extreme. So if I if I wanted to put somebody off exercise, I'd bring them in the first session and I'd thrash the shit out of them. Yeah, exactly. Just destroy. I'd make, I'd make them. I'd make them sore for five sets. I think what we what we all what need to remember as PTs is we like exercise. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's why we do it. The people that we work with don't necessarily, mm -hmm. which is why they're coming to us. Sure. So it's very, very important that we don't impart all our biases and, and how we want to feel on them because, like, it we we want this like long term success continuum. Right? Absolutely, so, and it reflects say, on us. To, it reflects on us professionally so, as well. Yeah, and, and just going back to you know, like um, there was a period. I don't know if this still happens there, but you, like gyms would offer like three personal training sessions mm -hmm. right, as part of your membership. Yeah, sure. So, the, so this this happens all the time when people come in and they like had the three sessions. I never went back to the second one because they the the only way the the, the, the trainer has that has, has that three sessions to make an impact. And I've done this, and I can say it because I've done it with people. And I didn't know any better. I thrashed them. Mm -hmm. And guess what? They never want to come back and do yeah, it. Yeah, like, no, if, if that's what fitness is, forget it. I'd sooner just not bother, yeah. yeah. Like, when, when when really now, so particularly in the, fir in the, first, in the first phase um, here, like, do you know what it is? Like, the exercise is almost secondary. So just getting to know the person. Mm -hmm. Like, like I still have this now where kind of like you'll, you'll do a session, you know, I don't know how many, how many sessions I've delivered, but you're kind of like, I think this person's going to be sore. And then they're not. Right. Or then you think they won't be sore and then they are. Like e every single one of us, and this is, this is, this is the, the big, our big philosophy is the need to, the need to individualize and get to know the person. Mm, yeah. And, and I, and I do this all the time. I'll, is I'll lay out like a three month program Right, and write it all down. And what I'll find is that in week four, the, 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 the third phase has changed completely because it's not it's not the appropriate thing to do with that person once I've spent some time with that person. Right. right? Yeah. And it's it's kind of like paper programming, right? You know, I'm going to know what I need to do in three months' time on this day sure. with this load. Like, no, you don't. Mm -hmm. Like, you can, you, can, you can model it and you can – you can have a roadmap to get there, but if that if that person comes in on that day and like the kids have kept them poor night and they've had an argument with the husband or their boss has been a dick, like that eighty five percent kind of like three sets of three is out the window, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So so it, it it's that kind of blend of you know you know knowing what your tools are and, and knowing the science, but also there's a human being in front of you, man, mm -hmm. and um. I know myself, I've had online coaches with Olympic weightlifting and powerlifting and they prescribe you, and it's, and it's, it's, what, it's, it's what you're paying for, so it's the right thing, but you get to kind of like week 12 and like you look at your percentages and you just want to burst into tears because the bar, <laughs> the, like, the, the bar feels heavy. And, and yeah, they've, they've done their job correctly, it's just they haven't got that, that, you know, that biofeedback in, mm -hmm. in, like, in real time to know how we're feeling on that day, you know? Yeah. I do absolutely. Um, so it's another. It's another reason why I tell people to go and get yourself a coach because, like, you, well, so, so, somebody decent. And then again, it's back to this idea of is is it's all it's always it's always on. It's it's go hard or go home. It's and it's like it's, it, do you know what for me and you in the fitness industry love it. Maybe mm -hmm. that's what it is. But to your forty-five year old office worker, yeah, who, like sits on an arse all day. That's not what they need. No, no, it's they're, too much. They're they're, they're, they're already over stimulated they're already over caffeinated they're all they're already overly flexed they, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean they, they need someone to just kind of like just take them through a almost a, it's almost a regenerative process yes. in some instances, you know yeah well that's the whole quality of life thing and it, it's it's i mean the first word of our two-word job title if you don't call yourself a coach is personal trainer so the personal yeah. side of it should be the priority I mean, yeah. I, I'm fairly sure that you'll think the same as me because we have a similar kind of degree of experience. But I personally think that personal training qualifications should be aligned to some degree to the medical uh, field. You should have to go through right. such a standardized procedural education. Strength training is included. You should understand progression, regression, all this kind of stuff. So when you get someone in front of you who you've never seen before, you don't just go, oh, program A today. Or we're going to do a thousand reps of this, and we're going to have your heart rate so high you will vomit yourself to death before you leave the gym. All that kind of stuff. I think it should be taken credibly. 
But the only way that would happen is you need someone to come along and throw so much money at the concept, they're going to want to make their money back, which makes it commercialized, which means they're only interested then in footfall for the outgoing personnel. You know, they, I, I don't see that happening um, in the industry, in which case, as we talked about before we started recording, you end up at the other end of the spectrum. The education for trainers is so lacking, it's detrimental to the client experience. And the cycle continues. We'd all like to eat a bit healthier, but sometimes it's just hard getting the right ingredients in or knowing what meals to make in the time frame that you've got. So I've put together four unique books available on my website right now that can help you make all those decisions, have the best nutritional start to your day, and start to make some real impact in improving your quality of life. Okay, so you can go to my website, www.thebodyengineer.training, and go to the online store. There are four books there for you right now. There is the 52 High Protein Recipes, Quick and easy five ingredient recipes. That's a fantastic good starter book if you're trying to improve your, uh, your meals. Your go-to vegan recipe book and the keto guide, okay? All available for $14.99. Listeners to this podcast get a discount if you use the code POD20. Yeah, no, I, I agree totally. And I think what you just said there about like having this crossover with the color of the medical profession, it would be exactly the way to go. And I think... I think with the you know with the, some of the statistics off the back of like COVID, um, this this is the ideal time. This is yeah. the ideal time to push to push to push um, you know ownership of your own health mm. to, to the fore. And I, I think I think we should be all over that. And um, it, because it's the it's a it's a, it's, a, it's reactive, isn't it? We want we want it to, we want a preventative model. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw the headlines for the idea that I I don't know how seriously it was a concept considered, but the the British press, because I do keep an eye on it sometimes, about how uh, the NHS might prescribe weight loss injections rather than seriously promote exercise and good nutrition. You think? And I read into that that the idea that the NHS would prescribe diabet- uh, diabetes medication as a way to basically block your appetite so you lost weight. I think mean, no, that's not the solution. There's no education there. You don't do anything positive. It, it, again, it's, exa- it's exactly that again, isn't it? It's back to this kind of like. You know the roof's leaking. Paint over the paint over the wet patch. Yeah, like, yeah. Fix the roof, man. Like get <laughs> like t- teach people, teach people, and educate to 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 take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and again, mate, I think I think that like the fitness industry has done such a good job of overcomplicating it. Yes. Yeah, I, you know, I fully like, agree with that. I, I, with, with if 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 someone saw my programs now, they'd be like, "That's so basic." Mm-hmm. And 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 yeah, like and, and as our as our nutritional as as would our nutritional interventions be really basic. Like I think the lay person is so um what's the word, just so confused mm-hmm. by the way and, and again going back to the education of fitness professionals, the re- I don't think we're purposely confusing people. Mm-hmm. We don't know because our level of education is poor. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I do again agree with that. The idea that Again, most people, when they think about anything fitness, they think about what they see on a frequent basis. That tends to be the, the feed from their social media, whatever app they're on. And the people who have the biggest um, followings are the ones who make the biggest fuss, do the wackiest stuff, whatever. So, you know, like you said, whatever level of, of athleticism you're working at, whether you're a beginner, you're an older generation, you're a pro athlete, the basics work that's why they've survived as long as they have you know no one's discovering new body parts we move the same way yet if you're trying to build a big following on social media and ha- and make sure you're noticed and all that well just talking about hip hinge push pull lift carry that's not going to be sexy that's not going to get you with notice so i'm doing bosu uh, squat kettlebell juggling today in my tightest lycra because that'll get me forty thousand likes right rather than going actually um, i deadlift and squat twice a week and and I think and I I, I I agree totally. And I think nobody wants to hear that this is going to be a long term process. Sure. Because because it doesn't it doesn't sell particularly well. And I, and I think just going back to what you said about the whole online program, in right, is that is that it becomes about front end. So mm-hmm. you've got to sell. Yes. And if you can sell in high enough volume, it once that's done, it doesn't matter what your product is. Because you're just replacing those people mm-hmm. when they don't succeed. Yes. With 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 more front end marketing, does that make sense? Whereas, oh, absolutely. Whereas in, what we, whereas in what we do, 
like you're invested in the long term the long term success of that person mm -hmm. yeah it's a quality and, and of life that's, change. That, that, that's the problem with working one to one is that it's, that's it takes it takes time to do that <laughs> yeah you know? but it, but again um, so, if if you look at any other aspect of a person's life like you said about paying over the dam if someone was going i'm going to have the best garden in the neighborhood or i'm going to work to afford the house of my dreams or whatever else no one would approach those kind of life goals with a i'm going to have this in 30 days yeah exactly that's that's really well put mate uh, that's that's really really well put it, and it's um it, it's almost i think i was oh, just before just before we came on i was listening to your i think one of your diet posts mm -hmm. Um, and talking about is it the diet industry like 4,000 books written on diet yeah like well that's not working is it yeah exactly <laughs> well that's that's the thing it's like the, the, the fitness industry is bigger than it's ever been yet people are more obese than they've ever been on a percentage yeah. basis so where's the disconnect and I think this is this is the this is the feeding of the the information so I think I think I think what what I'm looking I think I think we were looking man. I think we were lucky at the time we started out fitness right so I say whenever whenever um, I, we've got a, a junior trainer here and whenever I'm talking to a lot of younger trainers it's kind of like when I was educating myself right you had to it was like the, the internet was a thing right but most of the top professionals were still writing books mm -hmm. right so if you're going to have a publishing house publish you a book like the person who's writing that book needs to be credible yes right so the information you're taking in is is by people that are, that are really credible people you know people that are, that, that are qualified and someone's is medically qualified you're taking this information on right but now you're in a situation where there's so much information coming in if you've not had that opportunity to learn from credible people like where's your filter mm -hmm. is you you don't you don't and, and this I, I feel really really this is why i think some of the youngsters that i've come across are paralyzed by it because there's so much information so much consumption mm -hmm. and it's paralysis like by analysis like i don't i don't know you don't they don't know what to do with it sure you know and i, I just consider myself fortunate enough that like you know having a having a book in your hand like through someone credible gave you that gave you that filter because the the educational resources that i use now like it's it's a really really small you know, the, the, you know, if I, you know, I, I have my go-to people. If I want to, if I've got a, nutrition, a question about nutrition, I, I know where I'll go. Sure. If I need to find out about a little bit weightlifting, I know where I'll go. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think, if you're just coming into the industry now, trying to navigate that, I feel, I feel for you because uh, it's, I don't, I just don't know where, you, I don't know where to, I just don't know where you would start. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that, I, that's I, I don't, so. So I, I don't, as I said, I don't think, I don't think the industry is necessarily doing this. Um, on purpose, but I do feel like it's the blind leading the blind. And I, I say, I can say this because like, when I first started training, like um, the Weeder magazines were still a thing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I had housewives on body parts. Yeah, yeah. Because, because I didn't, I didn't know any better, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's like you said, you don't learn to drive in a racing car. I, I think that's why, um, I don't know if you know the name, uh, Dax Moy. Um, yeah. Yeah. His, I, I, he, he sort of stepped away from a lot of the industry over a, a, a few years because he had his own personal circumstances to deal with and everything else. But um, he used to have his gym in, I want to say Colchester. I could be wrong. Um, but uh, somewhere in the sort of like south part of the UK. Now, he started his own PT business way back in the day. And his priority was always on education of his clients and his staff and standards. And his, um, I read one of his uh, long blogs once, and he, okay. his attitude was, if you want to come and work for me, you are going to have to prove that you are motivated, willing to learn, and you're going to show me because you are going to do a six-month internship in my gym. Regardless of your age and experience, you are going to prove to me you can work on a gym floor. I am going to give you new books to read every couple of weeks, and I am going to test you on what you've learned. So by the end of six months, you are a credit to me, you are a credit to yourself, and the money you think you can charge per hour is relative to your skill set. But only at that point will I say, I think you're a valuable person as a personal trainer. Then whether you work with me or you go to someone else or work in your own space or whatever, you have a body of knowledge that's credible. And he's like, he never had a short list of people that was empty of wanting to come and work with him because they're like, I know that when I walk away from this, I will have so much I've gone in that's valuable you know, it's, it's, I got told by one of my uh, sports coaches when I was at secondary school, you need one voice or you're screwed. You can't listen to 
half a dozen coaches and your parents yeah. and your best friend you need to go right this is my coach this is my my source of information and stick with it learn from what that person is going to tell you because that's how you yeah. absorb skill sets you know you never had four teachers at maths at school you had one yeah yeah and no, that, that, and that's how it goes in no I, I i couldn't i couldn't agree more mate and i think my advice to kind of so I th- when it started to make to make to make sense to me and i think this is I think this is something we should play more more emphasis to right is that the anatomy and physiology side of it is is the difficult bit yes right and i think it's difficult to sell a qualification <laughs> which is front loading the anatomy and physiology because it's hard mm-hmm. and it, it's something that i have to revisit all the time but but then that becomes the filter that i use to to, to run my practices through right if, if if you if you can get a get a, a grasp on the a and p side of things then you can make an exercise applicable to where that person is. Mm-hmm. Does that does that does that make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, and, I, and that sort of that's that when when I first started to get more in, into that side of things, that's when everything started to fall into place for me. I because think, I think uh, no, go on. Go on. I'm say, I, 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 I think <laughs> we've got the so legal, I, legal I social media. No, I was going to say. I, I get what you're saying there. I think maybe the 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 disconnect then that possibly exists when it comes to teaching uh, A and P to would be trainers and coaches uh, is it's taught in a very dry manner as you would teach mm-hmm. medical students. Whereas it and I know why that's done certainly in the UK because the criteria to be credible for a, a personal training qualification it has to ultimately be backed by a, a body of something a sports body or a university that signs it off and they only sign off on it based on the criteria that they would teach themselves. Whereas if you were to look at the AMP knowledge necessary to be a good coach or a good personal trainer without specializing, you could teach physiology based on what you're going to experience with your clients. Personal trainers don't need to know insertions and origins of every single muscle they don't need to know no. the nervous system they need to know no. how certain things work absolutely and the more knowledge they can build over their career the better but you get taught the circulatory system as a personal trainer if you do a good course anyway because you do a whole big whack of AMP learning you don't need to know it you know you need to know what the circulatory you need to know what it is it gets oxygen around the body <laughs> but you, you know right. there's, there's things that are taught that like you said if you're doing a month on month on month residential um you know educational program which i did based out of bath university i was living as a full-time student and i'm fortunate that i can i can focus on learning but there are a lot of people that had no interest in that degree of learning who really really struggled even fa- even failed some of their exams and had to reset because they're like i want to learn how to be a personal trainer and how to coach i don't want to learn how to go through the first year of medical school you know, we did we did tissue dissection and that kind of shit when I was studying. You know, down to like patella tendon, this and so and so that. And like, this was really interesting, but it's not relevant to my job. Yeah, I think I think I think it's exactly that. It's, it's, it's taking that. So so for me, I kind of I was it was it was the exercise, it was the exercise, and then the A and P right <laughs> sort of behind it, mm-hmm. like learning how to teach it and then understand it because i was cause i was i was teaching this stuff long a long time before i understood it right but that kind of promoted the interest in the kind of the why the the, the, the why's and the where for and as i said that that for me now is the filter where you can look at something and think like is that is is that an appropriate exercise selection sure yeah you know? no, I, no i totally get you on that one i mean i've i've gone to great lengths through the probably the last five years last based on five. some of my own injuries to really really look at um spinal mechanics and that kind of stuff because i know the more i know i may never use it in my professional world but i mean let's face it the more i learn the more i'm going to be aware like you said but it benefits me to learn i mean i did and i i'm sorry to bore anybody who listens to this because i've said it in several podcasts before when i was living in saudi arabia because i had the spare time i went through the iron man um coaching university course for no other reason than I wanted to learn high-level endurance programming. And I t- I'll take away from that what's relevant to myself. I don't use it with any clients. It's not relevant. But yeah. I, I took the time to learn the difference of, of that kind of programming. So now when I do have someone who wants to learn a 10K, or get fit enough, sorry, to run a 10K, 
I can really tailor their training. But that's something that you don't need to learn that kind of stuff at an entrance level. Yeah. Even when it comes, it's the same with strength training. You should learn a degree of biomechanical awareness. You need to learn how to teach, like you say, the progression from hip hinge, good ankle and knee you know, movement, and go from there. You don't need to know every muscle fixation around the knee joint. No. It's overtaught to sell the course. You know, like we talked before we yeah. started recording, I spent every penny and then some of my own money out of my decade-long military career on my re-education. Whereas we can find courses online for a hundred dollars or less to go, you're a PT, well done, clap, clap. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, and I think that one. <laughs> it's, and it, it's a massive difference in an educational standard. But, but that's where we are with the industry. But uh, on that one then, I'll jump on topic a little bit because I've still got my bullet points in front of me. Do you think that, um, again, sort of like linking into the idea that we're a far more sedentary society than you or I grew up with? Because um, you think about, like, you and I would have gone to school. We'd have run around with our mates before school started. We'd have run around at mid-morning break. We'd have run around at lunchtime, usually playing football. And then we may have had PT, PT in the RP in the afternoon and run around after school. Everyone sits on their ass now. Do you think that school environments need to really teach more athleticism and strength development? Because I do. Yeah, it should 100%. be part of a it should be part of a compulsory programming, to my mind. It, 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 to, I mean, at the end of the day, kind of like your the the again, this is my biases here, but like I was always. Um, for, at school that was my thing and it's what I was good at mm-hmm. like the academic side of things were weren't my strength right so so having 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 that ability to show physicality was probably what got me through school right yeah um and um, obviously I so I've got a, I've got a seven year old at the moment mm-hmm. and yeah it's it's a different world right with screen time and, and academia and I think so to, to give it to give an example actually like um so i i i i found and i don't know if, if 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 you would agree with this or if this is what you found but i found coaching people in the uae that movement competency was lacking crap was the word um, i use right so <laughs> so 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 having having trained in the you train people in the uk then move to the uae then move back again mm-hmm. I feel like I can see um, a lack of movement education more than what I saw in the UAE, mm. like than, than what I see in the UK. Like most of the people that I train went through that physical education system sure. and have a and have s- some concept of like of, of basic movement competencies. Like mm. in the U in the UAE, sometimes like I was quite alarmed to see how poor people's you know basic movement competency was sure um i I wasn't i was never able to kind of really figure out why that was i i wonder whether or not that kind of because most of the people that obviously expat community are focusing on on academia to perhaps move away from their country of origin i don't i don't know but um but for sure like in i mean in in this country i uh, I mean, so with, with my little boy, obviously, you know, the industry we're in, we sort of purposely seek out movement stuff. And mm-hmm. so he doesn't have compulsory homework at the minute. Right. He does get homework and mm-hmm. like, we don't do it. <laughs> so the time that he would be spent doing homework, look, he's a little boy, man. If he's sat on his ass for six and a half hours a day, I'm not going to sit him at the dining room table for half an hour. Sure. Like, we're going to go out and we're going to play as many different sports as we can and develop his hand-eye coordination and his, his, his balance and his, you know, stability yeah. and his ability to, to move sprint run jump mm-hmm. and all that stuff because the thing is mate it's the body your body right your body is your vehicle that all this kind of cerebral academic stuff like needs sure <laughs> to, to 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 reach its potential so if if you if your body's like shit and you don't know how to move your body you don't know how to nourish your body you know how to rest your body like that that other side of the coin is going to be massively affected by that so uh, uh, yeah and going back to what we were saying about the whole covid thing is is that this is this is an opportunity we have an opportunity to 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 um there's, there's certain cultures where kind of like if you're if you're if you're failing in 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 your physicality that you're you're you know you're, you're viewed as a burden on society and like 
look, I don't, it's not about sort of shaming people because they haven't had the education, but I, I think this is a, a prime opportunity to say, do you know what, if you focus more on sleep, movement, nutrition, like you, we wouldn't have all these issues that we have, you know, mm-hmm. with your physical, mental health. And do you know what I mean? I, I think, I think, I think we're, I think we're getting it wrong. I, 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 I really do think we're getting it wrong. And, and it, 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 it's manifesting itself in this industry now. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know if you've experienced this, but um, a lot more of my conversations now are to do with mental health. And yes, no, definitely that's well, part of mine. And, 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 you know, spousal conversations between, oh, my husband's struggling with this, or my wife, or my, even my kids, in, in, you know, even, even mental health issues with kids. And, like, and I don't know, perhaps, perhaps I was a bit more sort of blind to this when I was younger, but I, I, I see this industry as a massive piece of solving. And, it, and it's this idea, again, and we, we repeat and repeat myself, but this proactive, mm-hmm. proactive rather than reactive sure. healthcare. Yes. You know? no, well, that's what we're supposed to be. Like you said, we're supposed to be a, a part of betterment of people's quality of life, not mm. take your money, sell you a short-term you know, almost non-event service or product, hoping that we'll get your custom back within six to 12 months. I mean, it's, I, I did a podcast a while back with a guy called Chris uh, Lang, who you may not know. He's got a business with his wife in, uh, in London. I forget the exact borough now. I'm gonna get told off about that. But, um, he, he was saying that, um, he has two kids and he's trying to get initiatives up and going around the area where they live. And it's so much hard work. So, and he's aware that, children from a very young age are like you said crowbarred in academia it's just sit down learn sit down learn sit down learn when they're at an age where that the mental stress of classroom should be at least matched by physicality because they're kids they need that physical development for their own sake to find out who they are what they enjoy etc cetera, etc cetera. but also they never can have another time in their life where they've got the chance to develop themselves you learn so much about socialization and who you are and determination and everything else through physical exertion as a younger person and then you, yeah. and you go forward from all, from all that and you talk you say screen time screen time screen time and and I, I was talking to him about um some of my experiences because i've lived over here for so long and working in the uae in saudi arabia where i uh, yeah i've been working with some teenagers who are very disconnected from their own physicality very disconnected from the idea of being healthy for health's sake because they've never had a reason to be aware of activity and sport and everything else. But mm. when you do get them to a point where they're learning for their own sake and they start to see a value in it, they are so be behind where they should be at 14, 15, 16. You know, I, I work with a, with one boy in, in Riyadh who was so unaware of his own physicality and so physically weak, he couldn't do basic movements more than mm. two or three reps at a time because he couldn't repeat the movements. Mm-hmm. Body weight squats, he couldn't do without stopping and thinking about what he was doing. And this wasn't someone who wasn't trying. He just was so disconnected from his physicality. Yet, if I went to a, a classroom in the UK, I'm fingers crossed I picked the right school, but and said, okay, guys, we're going to do uh, a little bit of military PT as a different theme and get them involved. There's no kid there that wouldn't throw themselves into it. They may not be spectacular, but they'd have been playing sport and running around with their cousins and their friends from a young age. I do think we're at a time, like you said, where we should address that because the disconnect is only going to widen. Everything is screen-based. Everything is app-based. It's The kids need to have an iPad and a laptop at home to do their homework now because it's not books and paper. So, you know, we, we it, it's a thing we should avoid in the age of fat shaming and everything else where it's a bad stereotype to say. But the idea of we're moving towards like that Wally cartoon at the end of the movie where everyone's super obese and sits on a floating bed and doesn't do anything ever for themselves. We're going towards that cartoon life. It, it, it does. It, it it does feel like that, and I feel like it's that. I mean, but it, again, it's it's the tough love thing, isn't it? It's about sure. Delivery. It's not. It's not about shaming people. It's good. But look, coming back, that whole personal thing again. The whole personal bit in, in personal training is getting to know the the right way of of delivering that message to the person. Mm-hmm. And so some people you might need to shout them, tell, tell them some home truths and some sure. people just don't need that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I forget, I wish I remembered it now, but um, I listened to a, a Ted talk a couple of years ago and it was given by a very high ranking American um, military officer. 
who, um, through the rotations of his career, was uh, now in charge of the recruit training depot. I think it was for the Army, not the Marines. I think it was the Army. And he was talking about like the, the devolution in physicality for young men. Because mm-hmm. yeah, you, you said you take the typical entry-level individual, let's say 18 to 20, who haven't grown up with any kind of labor-based part-time job as teenagers, didn't necessarily feel the need to compete in sport or activity. So their physicality is so much lesser. They don't have the idea of endurance and putting in effort, even at something they're not enjoying. So to get them into the military environment is a lot more work. The percentage of individuals who will now get injured is colossal compared to what it used to be. Mm-hmm. So he was saying that there is such a financial drain on military training because once these individuals get hurt through reasons that they shouldn't because they pull a muscle or they tweak a calf muscle or they, they get ankle injuries because they're not used to basically being on their feet. He said, we have a duty of care and a policy of we have to rehab them at least to a point where we can discharge them. Mm. So he's like, you know, he said, it's now an active wing of my, my training center is to get people back from a basic level of injury to the point where we can go, do you want to resume or do we kick you out? That's insane, isn't because it? Because it's, like yeah, it's like we're already lowering the standard to accept recruits because we have to. We don't get mm. hundreds and hundreds of farm boys anymore or guys who grew up working in warehouses at 14 for extra pocket money. We get people who have sat on their ass the second they leave school on the PlayStation and everything else to then go, mm-hmm. hey, guess what? You're going to run around all day. You're going to wear boots. You're going to carry things. You're going to do all this kind of stuff. And a lot of lads can't cope. Yeah, the, the 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 population can't produce enough people that can sustain that, right? Mm, yeah, exactly. And I listen to that. I mean, again, this is out of date now because it's probably like seven or eight years old, if not even more. But I'm sure it still stands as a valid point because the mm. PlayStations haven't gone away, you know? So it, it's still something to, to think about. No, 100%. 100%. I mean, I, mean, I, I had, um, jumping around my own experience with people, what are we in now? 2022. So probably three or four years before COVID. So we're talking a good while back before I went to Saudi Arabia. Um, I ended up with two out of the four highest executives of the same bank as clients of mine. I trained both their wives and they, they both got that you will go and do what you're told kind of attitude from their missus because they both were a bit overweight and everything else. Now, when I got both these guys, they're both in, they're both in their late 40s. One had had an abdominal hernia. One had a on the cusp of this is going to happen. You are going to have to have surgery. But it will be like a, basically a, a patch kind of job to prevent the, 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 the hemorrhage. If you can lose weight and get a stronger core pre-surgery, all the better for your recovery situation. Now, I worked with both of them for about six months. They told me that bar one person, because they knew each other, literally everyone in their job had the same problem. Because it, as, as one of the guys who was Dutch was saying, think about it. We go to school, we go to university, we stop athletics because, for most of us, because we're now just so focused on banking. We, we, we've got to live what we're doing. We go from that into the early, late stages of a career where we sit on our ass and we don't change. He's like, I'm in my late 40s with two kids. I don't do anything physical. So, it's, so he's like, we've all got to the point where our bodies are now so, much, so weak in our physicality, our internal organs rupture through our abdomen. And that's a staggering thing to consider, the idea that this guy knows a bunch of other men of the same age who are having injuries that should come to people 25 years older than them. Right. You know, so but, once, yeah. it, it, it's, uh, it's, and, it's a strange situation to, to think yeah, about. And, and, but again, though, like, we're so conditioned for, the, so, like, surgery is like, it's just such a normal thing now. Mm-hmm. Like, ha- hacking out organs, like, replacing joints, like, um, and don't get me wrong, like the the you know there's there's, there's some amazing am- amazing amazing stuff, but it's so it's so accepted, and it's just kind of like I think we just need to, if we did a better job at the front end, we'd be able to present prevent so much of this stuff, man. Sure, I mean, I I do genuinely think I was talking to uh, someone just last week. If I suddenly had a, ever huge windfall, or I became friends with half a dozen guys who manage a house fund, I'd say right between us, we're going to set up our own what you and I would recognize as an old school, private British school. And it will be a case of half of it is academic, half of it is extracurricular and sport. And the key, the kids we get through the door will be, you enter here at whatever pre, I don't, I mean, I don't have kids. I don't even know what's kids, what age kids are. You, uh, school these days, secondary school is 12. 
11, 12, go right. Between that age and you graduating at your any your A levels, you are going to have done a full progression as a human being. You will have played sport. You will have done extracurricular work. You will have pushed yourself academically. You will turn out as complete individuals. We're not going to say you now live in a classroom. Because mm. to my mind, looking from the outside in as a non-parent at this point in my life, I think that's what schooling is now. You know, because yeah, as, as my friend Chris was telling me that, he runs a fitness business, yet he has to find time to take his kids to extracurricular sporting activities because the, his kids do maybe one hour a week. Yeah. He's like, you know, his, his daughter, he was saying, his daughter didn't have her first swimming lesson at school until she was nine years old. But, he, of course, he'd been taking his kids swimming from the second they could get in the water. <laughs> but he was, he was saying to me on the podcast, think about that. He said, if my daughter had fallen into any body of water before she was nine, she'd have drowned. Right. So again, another physicality is a life skill, right? Exactly. I mean, that, that's one you want your kids to learn. You know, never mind doing pull-ups. Don't die. <laughs> it's always going to be a plus. Right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I mean, it, it, I do think strength and physicality is something that's being devalued by far too much of society at the moment. Yeah, 100%. 100% really. But uh, like I said, unless someone wants to write me a check for lots of zeros, then uh, I can't implement a large scheme to fix it. <laughs> but uh, right, okay, buddy. So I kept you for nearly the full hour. Um, so I'm just going to ask your insight then. If hmm. if we were going to talk about a, a collection of exercises that uh, someone listening to us goes, okay, I want to take my strength seriously and not the whole fixed path machinery. Yeah. And they're going to go to the gym three days a week because all they can fit into their schedule what should they be thinking to bring into their workouts? Okay. So, so how, so how would we set it up from a, from a strength perspective? So, so we, we have like, we have a dedicated core component. Right. So um, if you, and I know, I know core is a bit of a kind of, yeah, what, what, what does that, what does that even mean? Mm -hmm. Like for, for, for me, it's everything that's not your arms and legs. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> that's what your core is. Yeah, so it's a lot more. It's a lot more than just kind of just just crunches, right, or hanging leg raises or, or whatever. So, um, I think um, so. We tend, I, I'll be honest, we we tend to do core work at the front end of our programming. Mm -hmm. um, so we see it as a, everyone, everyone, everyone knows about a strong core, but um, you know, a, uh, back pain epidemic. I would say, like particularly, you know, whether whether it's sedentary or excessive flexion or. Like th there's a lot of that going on, so we so we would do some sort of dedicated kind of like th uh, three planar core work, kind of looking at um, starting sort of ground pro pro ground progressions like glute bridges and, and planks, and just progressing people through to hopefully some standing, kind of you know through your like half kneeling, tall kneeling, all the way up to you know we we, we use a, a get up actually as transitional exercise. Sure to get people into kind of like, you know, vertical locomotion type core stuff. Um, and we do some dedicated glute work in that, in that, in that phase as well. So bridges and bridge progressions. Sure. So, so I think that's important. We do it at the front end because I write programs for people where we put core work at the back end and then they don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, very true. So, 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 so that's, so that's why it's there. Um, and then, on a kind of sort of two-day rotation, our focus is, I think as we already said, on, the, on what we would, I would call the compound movements. So we would do some sort of hinging mm -hmm. exercise, whether that be a toe touch or a, a banded toe touch or a kettlebell deadlift, trap bell deadlift, uh, dumbbell deadlift, what, whatever. Some 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 type of hip dominant hinge, yeah? So on our, on our B day, we would then flip that with um, a, a, some type of squat pad. And that can be anything from so a, a deloaded like TRX squat to a body weight squat to all the way up to a um, so I have a, a few people do Olympic weightlifting with me so all the way up to the high end like overhead squatting or or front squatting everything in between mm -hmm. so the squat pattern's important yeah sure um, and de depending on depending on how how often we're seeing people and what their objective is if 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 their goals were a bit more athletic in that program we'd have some we'd have a we'd have a, a single leg. A single leg exercise as well. Mm -hmm. So again, depending on time, and um, we'd look at um, a, a single leg knee dominant. So um, at that kind of entry level, we'd look at something like an alternating step up, which would go through a continuum through through step ups to loaded step ups to step up to balance to potentially some sort of static lunge to a dynamic lunge, 
eventually way, way, way off into the, in the distance. Like we might have somebody single leg squatting, but that's, that's a lot of progression, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we'd also look at a single leg hip hinge. So, so we start people typically with just like a single leg touchdown progression um, and then work them through some you know, stability progressions or, you know, dumbbells. Um, but again, that, that that's really on a two, a three day rotation. Again, it's all going to depend on the goal. Sure. Yeah. Um, but reference up, upper body, like dead easy. So uh, yeah. vertical push, vertical pull, mm-hmm. horizontal push, horizontal pull. Um, tend to be a little bit more reserved with any vertical push in these days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, most people will go so will take everything depending on what their existing shoulder health is depends on where they'll join our program right so again if unless people are specifically looking for strength type stuff i tend not to put barbells overhead these days unless um just just because it's just sort of risk reward if you're a if you're sort of a fat loss client mm-hmm. and do, do we need to be pressing a barbell overhead probably not there's enough enough different variations i think which Perhaps have a little bit less risk attached yeah. that, that we can use, but but that's it really. So so hip hinge, squat, single leg hip hinge, single leg single leg knee dominant, uh, vertical push or some variation of vertical pull, um, horizontal push, horizontal pull. Um, at, at, towards the back end, as people get more competency, we do do more carry type locomotion stuff, um, and then perhaps a bit more dynamic core stuff. Um, so we do do like medicine ball power development from mm. like tall kneeling half kneeling all the way up to standing um and then we have um again i wouldn't even call it biometrics it's not true it's, it's not true biometric it's you know that our client base isn't athletic so they need to you know to, to the point where it's true biometric sure but what i would call like almost sort of like reactive stability so mm. you know hopping you know all, all the all the basic fundamental things that we talked about in education physical education right sure. so hopping stepping bounding you know all, all the all these things that we should be able to do because i think i think i think what i've what i found actually kind of since i've been more involved with strength and conditioning is that the the things that the things that you're doing there you know the locomotion the the reactive stuff the power stuff mm-hmm. like the, so obviously strength's a massive part of it but i think the current research is saying that like power power or the ability to produce power diminishes a lot quicker and is a lot more important to long-term physical health than than even strength. Mm-hmm. So, so, so we we do that at the front end. Just it's just bulletproof people against daily yeah. life, really, mate. Sure. To be honest, and just giving them giving them a, a whole toolbox of physical competencies. Mm-hmm. Right, what you've just said there, and I don't think you realise it, in a space of about three or four minutes, is you just laid out more intelligent concept of programming than I would see on ninety percent of social media. <laughs> Because you've gone from uh, entry level through progressive development from bi- from unilateral to bilateral to upper body, the spectrum of work that you would fit in. And you've also factored in there what you would avoid, what you would vary, what you would program based on specificity. You've just spoke there like someone who's educated and experienced, which for most people who would not get access to the internet and or seriously put time into who they'd hire as a coach wouldn't know or consider. And you, you just delivered the point that we've been talking about, about this is what should go out there to the benefit of trainers and the client base. Like you say, hip hinge, horizontal push, pull, vertical push, pull, that kind of stuff. The kind of stuff I have my clients do, and I see a lot of people lacking in knowledge. I mean, I know I've seen, unfortunately, in commercial uh, facilities, even in recent weeks, entry-level clients paired up with entry-level trainers who are try- getting them trying to do shit that... There's no balance. There's no strength. There's no safety. And if you understand the human physiology, then the first thing you worry about is, you know, fight or flight, parasympathetic, you know, the self-preservation mechanism. If you're losing your balance and don't feel stable, you're not moving properly. You do the opposite. You lock up. Just little things like that that you just, just you would prevent straight away by working to the level of client's ability. That that's just illustrating. If you're listening to this, that's illustrating exactly what should take part in a strength program. Just, just to give you an example, like with that, and I don't want to shit on CrossFit because it's some. Like, <laughs> <some good> friends, <laughs> I've got some good friends. That's good two friends hours of podcasting we could do right there. <laughs> so I've got some good friends that are CrossFit coaches, and you know, a, a good coach, a good CrossFit coach, is a good personal trainer, right? Yeah. But um, but I, I, I've had a guy come to me recently, 
Um, but I, I, I can't dive all, uh, so he's a pilot. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, first CrossFit class, first class, first class, clean and jerk. Right. And that a, and, and he would have been there by himself. He'd have been in class of one of 20 or 30. And sorry to interrupt, mate, with it, followed by a disc herniation in that first session. Oh, God. And, and that's the kind of thing that drives me insane. Yeah. There was, the, the, that, that didn't need to happen. Mm-hmm. That didn't need to happen. And that's, uh, that, that kind of sums it up in a nutshell there. And unfortunately, I got him after that. Right. And, it, you know, we're, we're kind of like two years down the road of trying to, trying to, put that back together yeah repairing that and and do do you know what what's frustrating is that is that everyone has this innate ability to look at movement Mm -hmm. right so i don't know if you've ever come across this but like if you if you see if you see someone in the distance walking towards you right quite often you can tell who it is yeah by by the way they're by the way they're moving sure we all we all have this innate ability to look at movement Mm -hmm. right and I'll have, you know, we're going back to when I worked work at the studio, you're with a client and they're going, that's not right. And I'm like, yeah. And, and it's how it, it's, it's, it's remembering what I, the primary role like, is to do no harm, is to not hurt anybody. Sure. If you're looking at something that looks like shit, just stop doing it. Well, that's the thing. I because, mean, because people, sorry, people are paying Robert. you yeah. and they're trusting you with their body. So take that responsibility, take that responsibility very, very seriously. Mm-hmm. And 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 I think I think I think that would be something to and particularly as I've got older, as I've started to become a bit older and less bulletproof and know what injuries are. Right? It's a very very serious job that we have. Sure. And you should and you should and you should take it seriously. Um. And 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 I think I think to, I think some people just don't understand the responsibility that they're given by people. People trust us implicitly, and they will mm. do whatever we ask a lot of the time. And if you if you're going to ask that of somebody, just make sure you do it from I don't know. Just, just from the best, the best place possible. Yeah, I, I very much agree with that. I think that's like we like we touched on before. The idea of how the industry values the client is needs to be part of the same feedback loop as how the client values the person they listen to or they hire. Because if you're only prepared to throw a, a, a penance, you know, of a budget at your coach or your trainer or your class, don't expect to get high quality, productive results without a risk of injury. You know, because that's that's a, a, a circling the drain kind of attitude, which unfortunately is now quite common. I mean, I'm just about to lose at the end of March. I say lose because um, you don't keep clients forever. Uh, one of my clients, my long term clients, is moving with his wife to Africa. He's getting a promotion with his job, so it means he relocates. Um, no problem with that. That happens. And I've had that guy on my books for three and a half years. He hasn't had an injury in three and a half years because I won't put him in a position where he could hurt himself. You know, this guy, he, he runs in his spare time, he goes hiking, he's got a Peloton bike at home and all this kind of shit. But his strength work, even during the lockdown period we had here, I manage. Like uh, this morning, uh, yeah, Wednesday, yeah, this morning, he was my first client of the day. Up body and core work today because we did legs uh, two days ago and he's going for a good long cycle tomorrow so he doesn't want his legs to be destroyed. His warm-up was pull-ups, chin-ups and press-ups. In, in a bulk sort of set of just round round we go because I want his he's got that strength and ability he's like he, walk, he walks in and goes what are we doing straight off okay right you warm up here's a bit of elastic work get the rotator cast moving lats scap everything else here's what you're doing off you go because he's now that level of competency I wouldn't get a newbie in and go we're going to do this kind of shit because they can't do it they wouldn't be safe and in the effort of trying to make them do it they run the risk of getting hurt or they're going to, if they survive that, they're going to be in no shape to do what comes next. And tomorrow they'll be going, I'm never going back to him. Right. And that, <laughs> uh, I think that's it. It's saving people from themselves. And some oh, places. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like in, you can be in, as enthusiastic as you want, but part of our job and part, especially when it comes to strength work, is the preservation of the client to go, right, I want to do more. No, no, no. You've just deadlifted your body weight, which you've never done before, mm-hmm. and you have to walk tomorrow. So we're calling it a day mm-hmm. there. Oh, but I want to do more. No, no, no. <laughs> that will do. <laughs> and, I, I, and, and I think, uh, sorry, uh, that's, that's against me as I've got older, right? So a, a, a training variable that people just completely negate, right? Is this idea of like progressive overload? Mm-hmm. If, if, if some people, if one, someone sticks a kilo on their lift every time they do it, <laughs> like, and it, it doesn't need to be that complicated. You know, we talked about the push ball hip hinge. Yeah, sure. Like, 
like, like you know, va- variation of tool, mm-hmm. like focus on progressive resistance, like so, so people are, and you'll do fine. Yeah, absolutely. You'll do fine. Yeah, I mean, uh, a good example of that is um, another one of my clients who we kept going um, during our lockdown here um, via online stuff, and I emailed him um, routinely or WhatsApped him copies of his workouts progressively. Now, when lockdown started, he only had um, uh, a TRX at home that I'd got him because he could do some like uh, basic mechanical stuff to improve his range of mo- movement. I was like, right, okay, I can't see you, so you're going to use that bit of kit. And he's like, I don't want to buy loads of kit for the house. I'm like, well, two choices. You either buy some stuff or you're limited in what you can do. And over the development uh, that what we did, he ended up with his TRX, um, my set of adjustable dumbbells, like the adjustable, you know, the ones you can make really big or really light, um, uh, a 20-pound sandbag, a 40-pound sandbag, a set of rollout handles, X, Y, and Z. And his, his structural development was based on the kind of criteria you said, you know, hinge upper body lower body all that kind of stuff to the point where he goes to teach his son six-year-old rugby um academy group as a part-time thing that he does and the parents think he's 15 years younger than he is he's like oh yeah yeah so he's like do you have kids he went yeah my kids playing over here with yours like really yeah he he did say to me a while back that one of his friend's wives just pointed at him and said see him he's not fat he works out (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> in the midst of the parent group at training and he said i had to walk yeah, away because that was fantastic thanks for that darling yeah exactly <laughs> you're like i see him he's not fat he looks after himself <laughs> what was funny was the guy that she said it to also is his colleague so he had to go into work on monday morning <laughs> ouch <laughs> but cool right buddy i've kept you for an hour and a quarter which is fantastic and i appreciate your time and i know being big in the uk the time difference you've got to get on with your day so i'll wrap this up as i always do and i'll say goodbye to you after we stop recording um social media email address website how can people find you and get in contact if they would like to uh right so uh email is uh, real fitness pt05 at gmail.com um we've got a facebook page which is uh, i think it's strength and conditioning personal training at real fitness and uh instagram is my own personal which is i think james cox rf um so yeah man cool like, we're, we're, we're um we're, we're putting a lot of stuff out at the moment and yep. um kind of you know stuff that's really directed to help people navigate mm-hmm. you know the the, the confusion of the fitness industry so it's, it, it is worth a look right? at, cool. least, at least on i think it is well, thanks for that, buddy. And um, I will definitely be on the lookout for the uh, the young lady doing her first pull-up at 58, and I will ab- definitely link that on my social media as well because that's going to be impressive to watch. Right, and yeah, just just to, just to back, so she's she's a client of 20 years, so that's how, that's how long that's taken. Going nice. This kind of <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Perhaps that might put a few people off. They could have to put 20 years into it. But... Oh, well, you know, if it's worth it, it's worth it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cool. Uh, well, th- thanks for having us, mate. Thanks, really, buddy. Really good for man. Thanks for your time.